What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, Shaka Antoine. And in today's video, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be the first of a few videos that I'm going to be doing a series out of. Um, the title is basically going to be Fishing Gear. Um, you know, I had a viewer that made a comment on the review of the uh, canal rod, the best canal rod to use video that I made where I was reviewing the uh, Lammer Glass Carbon Surf Reel and um, a viewer had made a request that I expand more on the gear that I use. So here you go, shout out to him. Uh, basically, so I'm just gonna make a series out of it. We're first gonna be focusing on, um, well, I'm gonna do it in terms of uh, locations and where I fish because uh, depending upon where I'm fishing, my gear might change slightly. So first, we're gonna start up north, right on the Cape Cod Canal, and we're gonna work our way down the northeast coast. All right, so this video, uh, the gear that, I'm, that I will be focusing on for this particular video, keep in mind that it's to fish the Cape Cod Canal. All right, so let's get right into today's video. Oh, but before we do, I wanna remind you guys, please remember to smash that like button, subscribe, hit that notification bell, make sure it's on all so that you get notified when I come out with the next video. I greatly appreciate it. And remember, this is a series, so you wanna make sure that you guys are subscribing and putting that post notification bell on all. All right, so let's get right into it. Um, first up, now, uh, you know, being that we're talking about Cape Cod Canal, um, I usually fish there in the summers. So the weather is usually warm. Um, even though it's a little colder than New York, I'm from New York City, but up there in Massachusetts in the summertime, it's usually always colder, or at least a little bit more chilly. Um, but a lot of, a lot of uh, you know, what I wear up there um, while fishing, it, it relates to being comfortable. Uh, because it's warmer, I, I, don't, I don't necessarily wear my dry top, you know, the guy cotton, too often unless it's like raining or something. So I'll, but I'll always have a hoodie on because in the morning, you know, first light, it, it, it's, it's kind of chilly. So I'll always have some sort of hoodie on. You know, I really like uh, to wear some of my fishing hoodies from um, uh, Going East. The Going East hoodie, or I have a few other hoodies now that I like to wear, but I'll, I'll always have a hoodie on because it, it always usually is kind of chilly uh, early on. Then if it gets warmer, I'll either take it off or if not, you know, I'll leave it on. Um, so, but my point is that I, I normally don't fish with uh, a surf top on unless weather permits. Uh, the other item that I almost always have on are shorts. Even though it, it may get kind of chilly, I'll always have some shorts on. And if it is a little bit chilly, uh, the next item that I will have on will be considered footwear, um, what are, which are um, like they're, they're, they're wetsuit socks, basically. <laughs> now I have some some corker wetsuit socks, which are ba they're basically neoprene socks. Very important while I'll have those on. Um, now I will have those on um, with boots on. You can wear um, the like, like, you know, the corker style wading boots. Um, those are probably the most comfortable. Uh, or you can do what I do which is basically, I'll take some, um, I have some boots that I wear that I took off from some old waders. I was throwing some waders out. And I looked at the bottom of the boot. I was like, wait a minute, that's, that could be a boot. So I, I, like, I basically hacked off the bottom of the wading boot and often I will wear those. They're very comfortable. In fact, I'll show it to you. This right here, I will often I'll have the, uh, the corker wading socks on my legs, pull them all the way up to the shorts, and then I'll, I'll put these boots on, right? And then I will put the uh, corker rock tracks 
on these to have the proper footwear on the rocks. So you'll get the picture. I'll have a hoodie on, I'll have shorts on, I'll have the corker wading socks on, I'll have some boots on, and then the corker rock tracks on those. You can substitute the, <laughs> the boots with wading boots with uh, studs on them. No, uh, no felt soles on the canal. On those rocks there, you have bubble weed, sea moss, and some other slippery stuff. Those rocks there are very slippery, so you should only be wearing uh, studs, rather be corker studs or whatever else, metal studs. Now that get up there, I typically won't wear waders while on the canal unless it's raining. So unless it's raining, I'm not going to be wearing a dry top or waders. Um, it's often considered a safety issue that sometimes you may get in the water a little bit, but God forbid you go in that water, your waders will fill up very fast and that will not help with you surviving um you know what the 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 waiting socks the corker socks wetsuit socks as like i said i usually pull them up to my shorts where the shorts end that's usually enough you know if a boat comes by throws up some water you know it'll just splash up a little bit and you know you won't really get wet so much there are some spots and some scenarios where you might want to get in a little bit. Um, then you, if you know you're going to do that at those particular locations, then throw your waders on. But waders, for me, in my experience, man, on the canal, because we're going to be getting on the bike, man, the bike sometimes will snag the waders or, or, and make a hole in the waders. So, you know, if I don't have to wear waders on the canal, I won't wear them in a dry top. Okay, just so you know. All right, now moving on to my bag. Now, the bag that I prefer to wear, which is, you know, that ODM um, bag there, the 3.5 ODM bag, um, I prefer to have my bag strapped to my belt. You know, some people I, on the canal, it's very common. You will see a lot of people resting their bags on the rocks or they have the bag on their shoulder. I used to wear my bag on the shoulder, but I stopped that because it kept coming around on me when I cast. Once I went to wear my bag on my belt, I didn't go back from that. Now it does have some drawbacks. You know, if the bag is heavy, if I'm on the canal, that bag is gonna be way heavier than anywhere else. Because you know, we're fishing a lot of heavy, heavy jigs on the canal and I tend to carry way too many. So the bag is heavy, so you know, kind of have to be careful of where you carry the bag on your belt. What I mean is that if it's above your waistline, you know, that thing is going to be bothering your back. And also, it will put some a lot of pressure on your hips if it's too far down. So I usually snug the belt up a little bit more when I'm on the canal, just to help with the sag, the bag sagging too much. And also, um, you know, I, I, I don't have as much gear on, so I usually have to snug up my belt a little bit more. Just any other time of the year, I will find I have to be fishing during, you know, um, uh, the colder months. I'll have to have obviously loosen up the belt so that I can get it around because I'm layered up. All right. So. So I know, let, let me uh, let me show you basically the gear that I have on. My belt because I carry some very specific things on my belt. All right, now this particular belt is an Aqua Skins belt. I've had it for years, <laughs> years. Oh man, I don't even know how long, but I know I had this Aqua Skins belt for a very long time. Now my belt. I don't know about you guys, but I've learned. My boy Al taught me this never to put your buckle dead center and um, on your, your belly here, always have it off to the side. Reason for that, um, basically, is so that you don't like say if you want you, you are um, reaching over your car, or you know, what I'm saying something you don't want to scratch up your car, the paint of your car, but also um, so that 
you're not rubbing on something, then it will undo your belt automatically. Right, so I always try to keep the buckle off to the side, but I keep other things on my belt, quite a few other things. Number one thing is this here, this D-ring. This D-ring looks kind of funny, but it's very purpose, but I cannot fish without this D-ring on my belt. And what I basically will do with this D-ring here, only purpose that I use it for is to rest the butt of my rod in it just as I'm trying to land the fish. Once I get the fish in pretty close, what I'll do here is uh, I will take the butt of my rod and as I'm, I'm bringing it closer to me, it's like right here, right in front of me, I'm about to um, start handling the fish. I will put the butt of my rod in my D-ring, right? So now I'm hands-free. So I can grab the line and then start dealing with the fish hands-free. Meanwhile, my rod is secure with the reel. Well, my reels are on the wall <laughs> for the set purpose, but the reel will be right here. And the reel, this portion of the reel right here will stop it. Will stop it from going down any further than this. So I can just worry about trying to deal with the fish. You know, if I'm taking a picture with the fish or, you know, anything, you'll be hand sprays, very convenient, almost no matter where you fish. And I kid you not, if I don't have my belt on with this D ring, I literally can't fish. Like I, I, I rely on this so much, even like when I'm changing plugs, if for whatever reason, so I don't have to try and keep the rod under my arm and you know, there's somebody in front of me or next to me and I turn, you know, like this D ring here keeps me all that. I can bring my bag around, get into my plug bag, no problem. All around, I have free arms here. I can go over here or, you know, and change plugs. It's just really the purpose of it is to go hands-free. Now, this particular D-ring, I actually had to change it some years ago. Um, basically, because I believe, what I had on here first, I think it was the Aqu Aquaskins D-ring. And um, when I finally, one year I decided to get this rod, this was the uh, Tsunami Airwave Elite. And I ran into a problem when I got this rod, for some reason, um, the shape of this butt here, I don't know if you can see that, but the shape of this butt was very unique. It's very different from all the other rods that I had. In fact, if you look here on my trusty um, um, pin Carnage 2, you, can, you should be able to see the difference in the butt of this rod here. This is the, uh, the Tsunami Airwave Elite. See how different that is? I don't know if there's a standard size for the butt of the rod, but I just know that this one was different to the point where in with the Aquaskins D-ring, only this rod would not fit in this D-ring. So what I had to do was switch and go and get the Surfcaster. The Surfcaster had this shape of D-ring and then that eliminated, eliminated that problem. So that's what I have here. Um, now on the other side, I have another D-ring just like this. In fact, I believe, yeah, this is the Aquaskins D-ring. <laughs> I still had found some use for it. This is the Aquaskins D-ring. And as you can see, I have my Boga um, clip there and just, with my, um, my lanyard that is also on my belt, right? The lanyard so that, you know, this doesn't get lost. You know, if I'm landing a fish or what have you, and for whatever reason I drop it, you know, this won't be lost. Um, but I kind of have it a little too far back. So there, I just clip on my boga to my D-ring on my belt. Now I also have the lanyard and a lanyard here, you keep the lanyard just so that you don't lose your, your, your gear. I have one for the boga and one for my pliers. Um, the other item that I should have here that I currently don't is a sheath, plier sheath. You know, it's also a good idea to have some pliers uh, stainless steel is preferable or you, if you're bowling, you can get the titanium ones from Van Stahl. Um, 
but yeah plies that has a cutter on there and also it's nice if you have one that has that lip on there so that you can change split rings if need be but typically um a plier sheath will go somewhere around here i gotta get one, a new one so you know you have your pliers there Let's see is there anything else on my belt no all right so that's basically it for my bag and my belt okay to be put oh no there is one other item <laughs> just realized that you will sometimes see me or wondering hey what's that big red thing on your belt oh and basically what this is is a a dry bag uh which is basically a waterproof bag made by uni gear this one is made by uni gear um i carry whatever i carry in here is what i would like for uh to keep things dry for instance i i keep my gopro in here i keep my headlight in here um i keep the um the lens there's a there's a a lens that i use for my gopro like if it's too bright outside i'll put a a, a lens on there it's like a shade basically to um basically cut, cut against glare i'll keep my gopro brad batteries in here anything that i don't want to get wet i'll keep it in here and then i'll keep that on my belt another d-ring <laughs> i have another d-ring on the the space on the side of the ODM bag, they have a little loop here. So I just put another D ring there for my dry bag. Uh, you can put your car keys in there, but I find that these dry bags here, uh, sometimes they get stabbed or they, they lose, you know, they just won't be airtight anymore. Uh, and in that case, I'll put another little pouch or something on the inside to keep whatever I'm trying to keep dry in that one. So that's everything. I believe that's everything that's on my belt. Uh, so that's the belt and bag combo. And another item that I will be considered to be counted as gear um, is a bike. Not just a bike, but a bike that is set up for the canal, or we call them canal bikes. Uh, nowadays, a lot of people have these um, these e-bikes, which they're, they're cool and everything, man. But I found that, you know, I would love to get an e-bike, but I want to set it up exactly the way that I have my bicycle set up. Uh, because of the, usually e-bikes are the tires and everything are a little bit larger, the different size tires. Um, you know, with the, the bike basket that I have there, you know, they don't typically, you can't put that type of basket on an e-bike. So until somebody comes out with something like a basket style for the e-bikes, you know, you you have um, you'll be you won't be able to carry as much gear in terms of rod holders and such um, on an e-bike. But an e-bike versus a uh, that, that could be a video too. E-bike versus the regular bike on the canal. You must have a bike. I don't I don't understand how people fit the canal without bikes. I do see people that do it, but you know. For reasons I covered in another video, you just can't run and gun without a bike. Otherwise, you'd be trying to guess where the fish are. And I, I really don't like to do that kind of thing. I would prefer just ride the entire canal. I prefer to park my car one spot and just ride the canal the rest of the way. That's just my preference. But this, this point I'm making here is must have a bike, a canal bike. All right, moving along. Um, now this item here, you don't necessarily need to, but again, it, it leads more towards preference as I addressed in the rod review video, and that is a two rod setup. I prefer to have a two rod setup. I prefer to have a rod for plugging. I also prefer to have a different rod for, for jigging. Now, these two rod setups are completely different. You know, um, sometimes I can use, use them interchangeably, but again, it, it relates to preference and what I prefer. All right, so the, the jigging rod 
is going to be my 11 foot Lama Glass Carbon Surf rated at 3 to 8 ounces. That's what I jig with. Or sometimes I will actually plug with the stick shad and the magic swimmer with that because they're a little bit on the heavier side. Um, the reel that I am currently using for that rod is the, um, the Shimano Stella 14K. Um, and I have it currently spooled with 40 pound super slick. All right, and I am also using a section of leader that's a little bit unconventional, but I'll tell you why. I, I typically like to use 100 pound test mono, okay? You wanna know why? It's because I use such high of a test of, of, of mono. It's because when you're jigging them ledges, man, your, your line will get frayed if, you know, as long, if you do it long enough, it will eventually get frayed. So the reason why, I use the 100 pound test because it has a lot more abrasion resistance. Why do I use 40 pound test line? I would I would all normally be using 50 pound, but I found that that one small change down to 40 pound from 50 pound test line, uh, braided line, cast ability. Um, you know, on the canal, you want to be able to cast if you have to. Sometimes, you know what I'm saying, when the tide gets a little lower, you have to get out you got to punch that jig out a little bit more longer and you can do that with thinner line and i know some people that will jig with 30 pound test line not me um but yeah i am using 100 pound test line for my mono leader and 40 pound test braid for the main i use uh small swivels to connect all the line and any type of ta clip Preferably the bigger ones, like the 125 at the smallest, um, up to, I think they have 175 or something like that. Only equivalent size TA clip. Do not tie direct to nothing. All right. Uh, so that's the jigging setup. Now, my rod that I use to plug with currently, I mean, I started out with an ODM um, DNA. 11 foot ODM DNA rated at one to five. Love that rod. Fortunately, I broke it on a rock. <laughs> so what I substituted with is my old trusty. <laughs> and I say trusty because I had this rod such a long time and I use it for almost everything. Um, it's the Pen Carnage 2. I would love to get the Carnage 3 for the next season. Who knows if that's gonna happen, but that's what I would like. Uh, but I currently am using the Pen Carnage 2 11 foot, and that is rated at 2 to 6 ounces. Okay, and I, I, I use that rod to plug with. Rather, if I'm casting, uh, if I'm doing I'm pencil popping or cast, casting the magic swimmers and the stick shads or whatever else, okay, anything other than jigs, uh, I use that. Now, the reel that I am currently using. With that is the Shimano Saragossa, which I uh, affectionately call that real the Gosa stall. <laughs> oh man, because I, I use this reel everywhere. Like no matter if I'm up on the canal <clears throat> or all the way down south, Delaware, Virginia, New Jersey, wherever, Long Island, everywhere. I use this thing everywhere. Uh, that reel is an 8,000 size, but I'm telling you, man, it's small, but it holds a lot of line. So I use an 8,000 Saragossa, and I have that one spooled with 30 pound test super slick. All right, and <clears throat> the leader that I prefer to use for that particular reel and its function, you know, with plucking, is a 50 pound test green mono. Uh, I would not use anything above 50 pound test green mono for that particular setup for, for jigging. Um, you know, if I, if I ever did use uh, the 100, per 100 pound test, that, that'd be too stiff to, you know, to, uh, to do the pencil action popping. And also with casting as well, flying through the ear really weird. Um, I mean, you could probably even get away with using 40 pounds. 
test mono. Now, I use mono, I don't use any types of fluorine. I just don't think it's that much of a difference. I've caught fish just fine with, uh, with, with using the mono. I've, I've used floral and yeah, it's nice and everything, but I'm not hell bent on floral like some people are. All right. Um, and I also use the same types of barrel swivels and TA clips to tie it all together. Uh, now, someone had asked me about casting. Um, those two rods are set up completely different. So someone had asked, oh, which one of those setups do you feel like you could cast with more or further? Again, the rods are not both set up for the same thing. There is some overlap with in terms of the ounces of, of, of jigs or plugs that they can be used, obviously, with a two to six and then a three to eight, there is some overlap, which is around the four ounce. Um, but, you know, the, 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 uh, the two to six rod, that's what I use to cast with, so, I mean, to plug with. So obviously I have that one set up with uh, lighter lines so that I will be able to cast a little bit further with that. But in, in relation to being able to get some castability back with my jigging setup, I did go down to 40 pound test, as I mentioned previously. And that for the sole purpose of being able to get some distance back. All right. Um, let's see, so that's basically the rods and the reels that I would use for specifically for the canal. All right. Um, plugs, I, I could get into plugs a little bit here, um, but there's about six or seven, six or eight plugs, seven to eight plugs that you just absolutely have, which I will count it in as gear. Not really gear, but you know, in terms of what you need to fish the canal with, um, magic swimmer, stick shad you need a pencil a pencil popper and i like to use my guppies and the outcasts on the on the canal just for the purpose of how well they cast and how well they handle the current um sp minnow you know the sp minnow is one of the only places nowadays that i will actually fish in sp minnow which is the canal um because of the, the macro situation up there um Al gag and the savages. You have to have those on the canal. Al gags and the savages. You have to. And also other other types of paddle tail uh, plugs. Um, you must have a bucktail to fish the canal. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people don't fish the canal with bucktails, but I definitely do. I've learned my lesson. You need a bucktail. Remember, everything hits a bucktail. So the canal is no exception. All right. Uh, also, mega shads. You know, mega shads, mega shads, rat tail, whatever you want to call them. There are plenty of scenarios when you're going to need one of those when nothing else is working. And I usually like to do a nice little mega shad and bucktail combination that I always find deadly in some very specific scenarios and locations on the canal. Trust me when I tell you. If you can find some, get some. You know, right nowadays I'm using the Zinger Baits. He makes a really nice one. Um, that's what that one is there on the wall. All right, so that basically wraps up what I feel needs to be covered as far as what gear you should have with you while fishing the Cape Cod Canal. You don't want to miss the next video because the next video I'm planning to do within this gear series is going to be fishing um, boulder fields, all right? So make sure you guys are uh, subscribing to the channel, you're liking the videos, and you have that post notification turned on so that you will know when I come out with the next video. I'm trying to pump these videos out, you know what I'm saying? So if you would like to um, make any video suggestions or you have any questions, please feel free to leave that in the comments below for whatever videos you would like me to make. All right, so please remember to have a blessed day and peace out.